Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing another video essay-esque thing. So hello from quarantine. Um, I hope you're all practicing social distancing right about now because the more you go out and ignore everything that's happening in the world, the longer it'll take for things to get better and to get back to normal. So also the longer events will be closed and I'm sure we'd all like to get back to our normal lives. I know I'm very upset about the second half of my semester being put online. I know my brother who's a senior is very upset. So let's uh, get on this. Uh, we're all in this together as HSM once famously said. And please excuse my head cold. Um, it's still allergy season amongst this global pandemic. So I'm really stuffed up and my voice is like a little raw, but don't worry about me. I'm fine uh, staying in bed, but I'm very excited to be making another video for you guys. Now I'm gonna have a lot more time on my hands to do this. <laughs> Oh, I guess that's good. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to do this video because it's the f first official one of a little playlist that I'm going to be making that's full of video essays. I know that I have to get creative with my YouTube videos since all of the movie theaters are closed and production on everything has stopped. Um, but I've made a video essay before if you want to check out my character study of Will Byers from Stranger Things, which is my favorite video that I've ever created. Part one of that is up. Part one, uh, part two is currently in development. I put a lot of time and effort into that and I put a lot of time and effort into writing this. This script is eight pages long, so. <laughs> okay, but today, I'm going to be talking about, um, well, you probably guessed from the title of the video, but I will be talking about LGBTQ plus representation in the media. Why is it there? Is it being forced? Generally, what's the deal with it? So I've wanted to talk about this for a long time, but I've always been too angry to actually post or film a video. Trust me, there are many videos containing long-winded rants about the sexuality of characters and who's represented in the media, but they were all deleted the moment I finished filming them because I was just too angry. And it's an important topic, and it's such an important topic that nobody will take me seriously or listen to me if I come out guns a-blazing, especially because I'm a woman. What? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Hmm? Um, so... Whether you like LGBTQ plus representation in the media or not, um, regardless of how you feel about it, I encourage you to watch this video uh, and just bear with me. Um, I'm not aiming to attack anyone's beliefs or to insult anyone. I never would. Um, I'm simply aiming to educate and to do like a fun little video essay. I don't know. Um, I'm definitely expecting loads of rude and hateful comments <laughs> below this video because every time I even like slightly mention something to do with the LGBT community that always happens um, and having a whole video about it but it's a shame uh, especially since I'm not aiming to start a fight or to again offend anyone um, but regardless of that I ask you all to be polite. Typing up mean words won't have the effect on me that I know that you hope it probably will. It will do nothing but waste your time. So for both our sakes, don't do that. If you're really frustrated and angry about the video, just move on, close it, never watch one of my videos again. Like it's fine. Yeah, so I know that this isn't like a sensitive topic for some people, so you don't have to force yourself to watch this video, but I encourage you to watch it. Um, and for those of you who stick around until the end of the video, I will be giving examples of LGBT content in the media that you can check out if you're interested in doing so. And yeah, so first I would like to start by quickly connecting this giant conversation, my voice sounds so awful, um, by quickly connecting this giant conversation about all of this to my own life 
I'm not going to share what my sexuality is with all of you guys. Like, I'm proud of it, but it's not the business of strangers like all of you. No offense. Um, but I will say honestly and openly that proper representation and education within the media would have saved me about a decade of confusion and repression and boatloads of self-hate. So... It's very important to me. Um, I full stop 150% steadfastly support positive LGBTQ plus representation in the media, and I will never be convinced to not support it. Um, I wanna make that very clear from the start. But I know that many people don't support it, or they don't see why it's necessary, or they don't understand its importance, or they do understand its importance, but they feel like things are being forced, or that it's made to be a bigger deal than it actually is, things like that. The fact of the matter is, LGBT people are a lot less rare than people think they are. Someone could consider themselves straight for the majority of their life because that's what society through social structures, stereotypes, history, and the media have taught people is right. And I knew virtually nothing about the LGBT community growing up because my environment didn't teach me. And even if I knew enough about my own thoughts and feelings to give them a label, I wouldn't have been comfortable doing so in the first place. Um, this unconscious hiding and shaming is something that not only I went through, but something many others go through as well. And I'm not going to get into why LGBT people are completely normal and valid and deserving of rights because they are, but that would be a 700 page thesis that is just too much for this short little video essay. Uh, but the important thing to note is that just as straight, cisgender, white men see an abundance of representation in the media, so should people uh, of minorities such as the LGBT community and they aren't around to corrupt people or to sin or to cause some sort of moral chaos. They exist to be freely themselves and to not live in shame that has been thrust upon them by others. They are deeply, deeply human and loved and cherished by whichever god or gods you believe in, if that may be the case. And so, because of all that, they are deserving of being represented in the media. Um, all people are, and the media is so important. Through things like film, television, music, novels, etc., people can feel seen, and being seen means not feeling alone, and feeling alone can do some awful things to people and their mental health and, and to their lives. I mean, why would anyone want to wish pain or sadness on another person? Like, if you do, maybe you should reevaluate things. But we don't want people to feel alone or isolated or like they don't matter. We don't want people to feel like they aren't loved or like their very existence is invalid. We don't want these things and those people aren't, those people aren't strangers. LGBT people are all around you and you probably know one or more than one of them without even knowing it. I mean, I've been LGBT my whole life and I didn't even really know it for the longest time, not until I had the tools to learn and when I was in an environment that helped me learn and when society started putting representation in the media to help me learn and to help me realize like the thoughts I was having were not like it just helped me. And the media, when it comes to this, is very important. It is ubiquitous. It encroaches on every aspect of our daily lives. The internet, the newspaper, TV, movies, art, books, social media, posters. We walk by on the street, billboards we drive by, etc. Media is everywhere, especially in 2020. Uh, and whether we're consciously aware of it or not, it impacts our lives and our perceptions of the world and of society and our opinions. The Atlantic published a very interesting article about this in 2015, citing the modern family effect. I will put the link in the description box down below if you're interested, but it essentially talks about how Americans gravitated towards a more favorable view of gay marriage uh, after 2009 when Modern Family 
first aired. And the show could be completely unrelated to this change. It could be really anything. <laughs> But it also cites the show as being one of the rare television programs in U.S. history that has been able to be heavily consumed in both red, aka Republican and conservative, and blue, aka Democratic states within the United States. So even though Modern Family is still on, it just shows like when it started airing, it had a dramatic effect on people's views, most likely. And in 2012, a poll done by The Hollywood Reporter, which is also in the description box down below, it says that depictions of LGBTQ plus people in film and television made them more, have a more favorable view towards gay marriage. Again, that will also be linked down below. So those are just some things to think about. But the overarching message here is that representation of the LGBT community in the media has positive effects um, and creates more allies, thus making the world a bit safer every day for people identifying within the community. But even more importantly, the increased representation has had a positive effect on LGBTQ plus people, and that is amazing. And this is probably where many of you say, so that's enough. That's enough. Modern Family is a good show, right? It's been on for 11 years. That's plenty of gay content, right? Huh? Right? I know many people in my life have said that to me. Well, no. Because I, for one, as a woman, don't identify much with, for example, Charlie's Angels. But they're women, you say. How could you not identify with them? But I say in return, other than their gender, I really don't have anything in common with those women and I can't see myself in those women other than the fact that we're both women. And that's not a lot. So, <laughs> um, minorities should not be limited to one type of story about them. Though they have struggles and those struggles are incredibly important to learn about and to talk about, they exist beyond them. Black people should not be limited to films about slavery or racism. They have lives, they exist beyond those struggles. They have other stories. And similarly, people within the LGBT community should not be limited to stories of homophobia, coming out, or AIDS, and they exist beyond those struggles. AKA, they have hundreds of thousands of different stories to be told, just as cisgender heterosexual identifying people do. The more those stories get told, the more people out there feel seen and feel valid. And again, we want that for people because that's good. We want people to feel good, you know? Like, yes, we, we don't want people to hate themselves for things that they can't control. So telling all these stories is very important. Additionally, happy endings happen for LGBT people. <laughs> Positive coming out experiences happen for LGBT people. Some of these people don't even need to come out and that's okay. There's more, there's more. And these stories may not be as dark and dramatic, but they deserve to be told. And straight people aren't the only ones that solve crimes or win awards or are top athletes like think of Megan Rapino. like think of the U.S. women's national soccer team just look at them they're amazing oh it's so good it's important to show that you know like it's important to have that level of story diversity for all minorities not just the LGBT community not just people of color everyone deserves to have a multitude of diverse stories because no one identity belongs to one story or the other way around. Unfortunately though, there have been quite a few missteps when it comes to how LGBT people are portrayed in the media and I would love to use this video as a means of shedding light on that. So let's dive in. <laughs> Oftentimes, and this is not surprising at all, LGBT people are depicted through stereotypes. Gay men are displayed as incredibly feminine with great fashion sense and lesbians are depicted as manly and masculine and of course there are some people like this but by no means is it an accurate depiction of an entire group of people 
And many shows and films fall into this trap, particularly ones that are older, and that's a shame. But being aware of it and having LGBT people in your writer's room behind the camera helping to create this content makes a big difference in how the stories are told and how people are depicted. So that's something that Hollywood really should be aware of going forward. And another thing is that there, ha there tends to be a problem with the media fetishizing LGBT people. There's a problem across, it's a problem that spans across all platforms, including music. And I've seen it a lot with lesbian and bi women, which is a real shame. And I know it happens to gay men as well and other members of the LGBT community. And it's sad and it's dehumanizing and creepy and rather weird. And I'm not sure how much detail I would really like to supply here. I'm sure you all know what I mean, but it's tricky to gloss over, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, but I thought it was important to bring that up because it's a thing that happens. Another large issue with how LGBT people are represented in the media and in society in general is that there's a real ignorance to specific groups within the LGBT community. I'd say cis white gay men are the easiest to find representation for and the farther you get from that, the harder it is to find representation. For example, POC transgender men and women have almost no representation in mainstream film and television. I was asking around and it was really hard for people to come up with films and television and stuff that depicted trans people at all, let alone POC trans people, let alone doing it either of these, like doing it in a positive way that people can relate to. And that's a real problem. It, that's a problem. <laughs> and there's virtually no representation for asexual, demisexual, or intersex, intersex people. And that's also, that hurts. So now many of you might be thinking, Emily is speaking a completely different language. What are all these words? What is going on? I'm sure many of you are very confused at this stage in the video. Well, seeing all of these things represented in the media would help you understand more, as it did for me, as well as doing individual research through resources that will be linked below, because I had to do a lot of research on my own and just making friends and, and just making strides for myself to learn these things also really helped. But there are a lot of blurry lines when it comes to defining, defining things within the LGBT community because at the end of the day, people don't always fit perfectly into labels and choosing not to identify with one or with, or choosing to identify within multiple labels is sometimes what's best for someone. So, and what makes them feel most valid and comfortable. So, it's really hard sometimes to define it to other people. And I think the only way that we can really like educate people, especially people who aren't willing to go do research, like an extensive amount of research themselves, because it is confusing, is to just put it in mainstream media. So <laughs> that's, yeah. But I always am willing to like talk to you guys if you wanna reach out to me on social media or in the comments if you have any questions and I will answer to the best of my ability but I'm no expert. I only know about my experience and the experiences of my close friends. And that's really all I can very accurately talk to you about when it comes to like experiences. So yes, but another thing that is done wrong when it comes to representing LGBT people in the media is queer baiting, which is an incredibly big problem. I talk about it on my channel a lot because for some reason it keeps happening and it's so frustrating. Um, but it stems mostly from studios and companies trying to bring in the LGBT demographic to increase their reach, which is what they do for every demographic. But however, this usually takes the form of one or two LGBT token characters that are given a very low amount of screen time and attention within the actual content if the fact that they're LGBT is mentioned or depicted within canon at all, because sometimes studios and marketing teams are just like, this character is LGBT, and you're like, whoa! And then they it, they never do it, like, there's 
no way why you would have known that. And it's like, what? They literally just said it to get people to go to the theater and it's so frustrating. <laughs> so, unfortunately, Disney is one of the worst when it comes to queer baiting. In an effort to appeal to all people, as Disney prides itself on, it frequently announces gay characters without giving them anything in the form of representation. For example, making a big deal about a two second moment max in the 2017 live action Beauty and the Beast when two men at the very end slow danced for like no they didn't even slow dance they just danced together or like started to dance together for a very short amount of time <laughs> and very similar things have happened in Star Wars, Marvel, and recently Pixar where they announced an animated lesbian cyclops character who was quote integral to the emotional core of the film when she most certainly was not and had a very minor role where she offhandedly mentioned having a female partner. It is good to have moments like that that help normalize it and kind of sneak it into people's lives but the fact that they're making a big deal out of it and trying to draw people in that is not good and then the real queer baiting comes in when they're making it seem like two characters are like really going to be gay and then they they do everything like write them romantically the actors want it like everyone's talking about it there's whole fan bases for it and then they never do it but they keep teasing and they know that they're teasing they're getting people excited but they do nothing with it ever and it's so frustrating and i love disney so much like so much i consume so much of their content multiple times but their constant missteps when it comes to the LGBT community are bound to catch up to them at some point. And they moved Love Victor, their Love Victor show, which is a spinoff of Love, Simon, to Hulu, which is important because it no longer boldly carries the Disney name. It's now on an extended, like, off-to-the-side platform because it was apparently too mature for Disney+, Plus, a streaming service where they feature content that includes suicide, murder, blatant racism, slavery, stuff like that. Very, very awful things is in a lot of their stuff on Disney+. Plus. And I know a lot of it's old, but some of it's not that old. Some of it's from the 2000s. And some of it is literally Disney Plus original content that features like very dark things. So their Disney brand is kind of vague when it comes to things, but for some reason, LGBT people seem to not be their Disney brand. And they cancel a lot of shows with LGBT rep, regardless of their popularity, such as Andy Mack, or before they're ever even aired, such as Four Dads. And potentially, but hopefully not, Diary of the Future President, which is currently on, and it's such a good show for representation, not just within the LGBT community. So that's a shame. And then in High School Musical, the musical, the series, a show that I love they promote the show with photos of their gay couple but three of the scenes they still use in promotional photos don't actually air in any of the episodes and in that specific case i understand pushing the development of these two characters to season two since they didn't know if they were renewed when they shot them but they now know that they're renewed and they still use those scenes that have been deleted and that we're probably never going to see. Hopefully we will for promotional reasons, but they're not there. And there's hardly any content for those two, for that couple to begin with, which makes it even more frustrating because they're still using it to promote scenes that don't exist. So that's a lot. But that was a mini rant about Disney because I, I can't not bring them up because they're one of the most powerful companies in the world and their influence on society and on children is incredibly heavy and their lackluster representation and clear resistance to putting LGBT people in the forefront of any story is alarming and disappointing and regardless, of, they can't even, they can't even say that they're, it won't financially do well because they haven't even done it yet. And it's just frustrating. But it's important to me that people get the content and the representation that they deserve. It's so, so, so important. 
And there's no such thing as being too young to learn about it because people are taught from the time they're toddlers that it's okay for men and women to love each other. Having an, a character be LGBT does not make the show mature content. LGBT stories are not inherently mature content. I would like to put that on billboards across America. LGBT stories are not inherently mature content. But mindsets won't change without positive representation. It needs to be just as ubiquitous as straight cis content is, and it needs to be normalized because we're normal people. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But I think it's really important that people have means of learning and of finding places where they feel represented. So I'm going to give a few examples below of where you can kind of watch or consume some media that's LGBT. And I will also include this list in the description box down below for younger audience. So there's The Bravest Night on Hulu, which is like a kid's show. And then there's Andy Mack and Diary of a Future President on Disney+. Plus. Those are both really good, but all of those are very good for representation on, in multiple ways. Um, and they're, they're a very appropriate for children. So that's great. And I love them. Okay. If you're looking for a lighthearted rom-com, you can watch Booksmart, Love, Simon, Alex Strangelove, The Thing About Harry, and The Way He Looks. Those are not the only rom-coms, but there aren't that many, so those are a few. Other films, I would just like to preface, I have not seen all of the things that are on this list, but I've seen a lot of them, and things that I haven't seen have been recommendations from friends of mine that within the LGBT community so other films Birds of Prey, Moonlight, Brokeback Mountain, Boy Erased, Call Me By Your Name, Pride, Milk, and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Also some of these are really heavy so just warning um, not all of these are lighthearted like I was emphasizing earlier is important some of these are actually like dark sad stories um, but not all of them but just look them up and, and research them before you watch them if you think that might be a problem. TV shows uh, that have not yet been named in the video or above. Um, One Day at a Time on Netflix. I'm Not Okay With This on Netflix. Pose on Netflix. That's the only trans, like heavily trans-centered media I've seen. So... I really like that show though. Um, the Fosters, don't even know where you can find that. Sense8 on Netflix, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Ke Queer Eye, Orange is the New Black, Sex Education, Will and Grace, Legends of Tomorrow, Degrassi, Glee, Skins, and my favorite, Scam. Scam is a show that is basically exists in a bunch of different countries. The best one is the original, which is in Norway, but you can find bootleg versions of it in English or with subtitles, not in English, with, with English subtitles if you want. But that's the coolest show ever, and honestly, I might make an entire video on it because I have all the time in the world, but I highly recommend Scam. Um, and singers and music, if you're interested in that, Ben Platt, Little Nas, Frank Ocean, Troy Sivan, Kim Petras, Petras, Girl in Red, Haley Kyoko, Orville Peck, Tyler the Creator, Tadra Call, Mika, Janelle Monet. I don't listen to all of those, if you could tell by the way I try to pronounce some of them, but um, again, friends helping me with this. Um, musicals, because we love a good musical. Uh, the Prom, Falsettos, Bear, a pop opera, The Book of Mormon, kinda, uh, The Great Comet of 1812, Six, Fun Home, and Once on This Island. And then if you're looking for a really good one that just makes you feel loved, Dear Van Hansen. Okay, books or short stories, and this is a very short list because there are so many books and short stories <laughs> that feature around LGBT people. So I'm going to list uh, three of my favorite things and one that my friend recommended. I'll Give You the Sun, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, and a short story called First by Ryan Van Meter. Love it. And then my friend recommended Dead Knot 
by April Daniels. And I will leave it at that. Um, this video is long enough. This list will be in the description box down below, as I said, and this isn't all the rep there is, but it's stuff that myself, again, or my friends um, decided to include that makes us feel seen and or happy. And um, if you guys want, I can make more lists like this in the future. I can make whole videos like this in the future. But if you have any recs or want any recs, then you can reach out to me in the comments down below or on my social medias. The links are in the description box. Um, and yeah, okay. Thank you all for listening to me and for being patient if this isn't your thing. And I hope that we can continue to move towards a more accepting future where people feel positively represented in the media that they consume. So yes, that is that. <laughs> I finally made the video. Okay, well, it's happened. Um, <laughs> I will post this, I will do it. Um, yes, okay, yep. I get so, I don't know why I get so nervous. Like I never post the videos I make about this. I don't know why I get so nervous, but I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. Why should I be? Who's making me nervous? Why are they making me nervous? Why am I letting them make me nervous? All right. <laughs> okay, well, stay healthy everyone and consume some of this media and educate yourselves. All right, have a good day, everyone.